I'm going to take a quick look at this labeled graphic because it's got a, a three-dimensional zoom in it that some folks have been asking me about and I thought it would be kind of cool to take a look at how, the, how I did that. This is from Storyline and when you click on the headlamp it zooms in but it not only zooms in you get a three-dimensional movement to the scooter so it moves in a way that you wouldn't get with just a regular zoom. It does it in a three-dimensional way. So folks have been wondering how I did that, and now I'm going to show you. The bad news here is that I'm using a 3D modeling and animation software called 3D Studio Max, and it's probably something that most people don't have in their toolkits. But I would imagine that you could probably do it in some other software, maybe Google SketchUp, although I haven't tried it, and maybe some other things. I know that Blender is a free 3D animation and modeling software, apparently very difficult to learn to use. But at any rate, I'm sorry, this is probably something not in your toolkit, but it's something I just happen to have, and I like to use it, and, and it's, it's the only way I can see to get this effect. So let's take a quick look at that. We're going to go over to... Um, 3D Studio Max. Here it is. 3D Studio Max. And I have a three-dimensional model of my scooter. If you take a look at this one up here. Let's see if I can spin it around. There we go. And it's a 3D, 3D model of the scooter. I think I found it online somewhere. And I have it set up over here so that the scooter moves around and then I've got a camera. This is a camera over here pointing at it. And this is from the camera's point of view and I have it zooming in like this. Now it does that in 10 frames and that's it. Just 0 through 10. And what I do is, I don't know why the front leg shield is transparent here, it's just part of the 3D model that doesn't make sense, but if you render this you end up with a picture it looks like this. I have it on a white background and I have the scooter colored like that. Now what I would do is I would save this image as a PNG and then if I move the timeline forward one and render it again, it gives me another picture, slightly different than the other one. I would save this one as a PNG number two, and I would keep on doing this down the line each time doing a new picture until I had all ten of them. And when I have all ten of them set up, it looks something like this. I've got, um, here's all the ones for all the different movements that happened um, in that interaction. Here's the first one that goes for the headlight. So there it is. And then I've got, um, that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then I took number 10 into Photoshop and brought down the lightness on everything except for the headlight. And that's just something that you'll see later in the interaction that I use that. So once I had these 10 images, the way that I brought them into Storyline, here we are in Storyline. Let's take a quick look. Let's go down to the base layer. Here in the base layer, I'm set up to take you to one of these layers, each one that has something to do with one of the callouts. So the headlamp one, we'll go over to the headlamp. I've got a hot spot for just a return covering the entire thing. So I'll turn, turn that off. And um, down here, what's going on down here? You'll see that I have these. And if I start removing them, it's going to bring us back to the first one. There we go. There's our first image. There's image number one. And I've laid them out on the timeline sequentially through 1 through 10. And this is as short as they can be right there. And if you're wondering well, how short that is, that short is uh, 0.25 seconds, a quarter of a second. That's as short as they can be. And I've just got them all lined up one after the other on the timeline sequentially so that you would play this one and then this one and then this one and then this one as it goes down the line until you hit the final one. So that would then look something like this. Just got them all lined up there. You can see the animation happening, be it slowly. And then here's the top one that has that grayed out section. So let me turn my hotspot back on. And let's take a quick look at how this runs again from the preview. So when you hit this, you're on the base layer. 
You press this one, it brings you to the new layer with just the headlight, and it zooms in sequentially through those 10 images. And then you return, and it goes back. And I think that's the part that really sells this. I think if, it just, if you just went directly back to the beginning again, it wouldn't be quite, as, quite the same. It's having that return trip is kind of nice. So the return trip is just another layer set up, headlamp return, and it just goes through the sequence backwards. Here it is. Um, let's see if I can turn this guy on here. And you can kind of see that it just, no, you can't see that way. It goes the wrong way. All right. <laughs> anyway, you can see it kind of returns you backwards the other direction. You remember in this one, it kind of goes like going up the stairs, and here it is going down the stairs. And that's what brings you back to the initial state back here. So anyway, that's that's the magic there. It's just 10 images put into a sequence in the storyline uh, timeline. And uh hope you enjoyed watching me.